Today's topic for the Wealth Kill Freestyle, five time-tested tactics for bear markets. I wrote this post initially for Kiplinger. We wanted to add a video for it. Happy to report I didn't get any hate mail from when this went live on Kiplinger because everyone always seems to have an issue with some of these items. So stay tuned. We'll walk through all five of those coming up next. Okay, so depending on when you're watching this, initially COVID in 2020 triggered this post because uh, March, the month of March, there was a, a more than just March, but March was a wild month to say the least. Um, so I wanted to walk through, as we were going through that, I kind of thought through what are some things you can do in, in bad markets, whether they're bear markets, whether they're short-term corrections, whatever you label them. I wanted to walk through five ideas. Uh, so the first one, which, is in my opinion the smartest thing to do um but some others will, will argue with that and it depends right what, what do you believe in do you believe in passive management or active management passive managers buy and hold all day we love it um that that's where you know it's my theory i believe in modern portfolio theory um active says no you know you're moving in and out you're trying to time that um and i, I always say active does work in certain market cycles i just think it has a hard time in full market cycles so first step first option i should say is do absolutely nothing um, if you saw your March statement in 2020 due to COVID, you probably almost fell out of your chair. By the time you got your, your June statement, your end of June statement, so quarter one versus quarter two, you probably thought, wow, it's recovered most of it so far. Uh, if not, maybe more, depending on how, how you were invested. Uh, so the first one, I know sometimes it's hard to stomach uh, because you see that, you watch the talking heads on TV, it freaks you out. But the first option, do nothing. All right, number two, tax loss harvesting. So if you're not familiar, familiar with this term, it, it's a pretty popular term in the, in the financial world. You, maybe you've seen a blog about it um, or a post from your, one of your favorite finance writers. Uh, tax loss harvesting is this. You're essentially looking through your, your portfolio and trying to, to lock in losses uh, at some point. Some individuals are all about tax loss harvesting. I, I, I fall somewhere in the middle. I, I think it's a good thing to take advantage of, but I don't. you don't need to go out of your way to change your entire portfolio just to lock in losses. At the end of the day, you're just deferring capital gains in the long run. Ultimately, you always want to have capital gains. It means you made money. Um, so tax loss harvesting. And some of these some of these items that we'll go through, these five, some of them you can do more than one together, right? You could buy and hold, but maybe you do see some that came down and you have a chance to lock in some losses. Or maybe it gives you a chance to rebalance or get out of some positions you didn't like. So option number two, another thing to look at is just tax loss harvesting. Number three, building on that tax loss harvesting idea is just Overall, has your risk tolerance changed? Do you have a chance to update your allocation? So if you have this pullback, and let's just say you did have a large gain in there, and this pullback gives you an opportunity to either lower your risk, maybe increase your risk, or just update your allocation, or maybe get out of positions to simplify your portfolio, or maybe you're adding to your portfolio to, to add you know a different strategy to it. Take advantage of those down markets, right? It gives you a chance to get in there, clean things up, decide your winners and losers, and if, if you have that investment policy statement in place, that IPS, read your rules right what did you write down that's the key right through all of this through all five of these controlling your emotion and doing everything with a with a premeditated to-do list is ideal right that's what we want to do we want to re re remove the emotion from investing that's that's the best way for that long-term success so number three would be if you have a chance to update your risk tolerance or your allocation during that down market now's a good time to look at it Number four, number four is to mostly this one would be targeted towards our retirees, individuals that are truly pulling from their portfolios. So this would be a good time to stop or slow withdrawals. Um, I, for, I forget where the analogy was from, but I always call it workers going back to work, where if the market's coming down and you're taking, taking workers out of the workforce the whole way down, when the market does go back up, you have less workers going to work for you. I forget where I heard that analogy from, but I, I probably use it quite a bit uh, with some of our clients when we kind of talk through that that slowing. Um, and sometimes we even hear this labeled as kind of that agile withdrawal rate. Um, you know, historically, you've always heard this 4% rule, but there's now better research coming out that says, hey, 
maybe we we shift that down a little bit in this period of time if it goes below this um, but maybe if the market's taken off you have a little bit more wiggle room so understanding that or even what i sometimes look at is just sequence of returns those few years before retirement those few years after retirement those are all really important um, but if you can slow or stop withdrawals in a market downturn you're going to have more workers to go back to work whenever the market does return uh, or it does go back up. And I, I wish I could tell you when that would be all the time. I, I, I have less gray hair than what I do in my 30s, uh, but I can't tell you that. But if you do see it going down and you have a chance to, to slow or stop those withdrawals, try to take advantage of that. Number five. Number five is just understand market history, right? It stinks going through market downturns. I, I tell all of our clients now, everyone I talk to, March was very stressful. March 2020, again, depending on when you're watching this, with COVID, it, you had such a large drawdown in such a short period of time. And it wasn't even just the markets, right? You turn on the news and you're scared to go outside. We don't know what's going on. We, we hear about this pandemic and this COVID. It was just a really strange time. But the market, as we sit here today, uh, the market did come back. It recovered that. It, you didn't know it at the time. You thought, heck, is the world ending? Um, but understanding market history and understanding that we've gone through crazy events like that and the market does recover. We don't know why, we don't know how, but it does. So understanding that and, and just building that layer of, I don't want to say trusting the markets, but just knowing that they're going to go through their cycles and you're going to have downturns. And, and sometimes those downturns are quick, kind of like COVID was, um, or maybe they may be longer, like the housing crisis or the financial crisis, where those were very large drawdowns, but they took a little bit longer. This one was like, boom month of March, there you go. Uh, so just understanding market history, I think can go a long way. And whether just it's controlling your mark, your your emotion in those markets, or just understanding that, hey, those things happen. So those are five time tested tactics for bear markets. And why I love to say we're never going to have another bear market again, we will, we'll have many of them we will have many drawdowns, we will go through this, it's the market history. So keep those in mind, do your research, understand what's going on. Good luck out there. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you on the next video.